Hi, I'm Sarah from The Upcoming. An absolute pleasure to have you here with us in beautiful Venice. Uh, maybe you could just begin with a brief introduction to your film. What can audiences expect if they watch it? Thank you. Thank you so much, first of all, for your invitation. Um, the film is, is basically an attempt to um, uh, try to, um, you know, discuss uh, the contemporary legacy of someone, of an artist as Sergio Leone, but also we try to highlight, you know, the, 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 the personal uh, reasons that made him, you know, the artist that he, that he is. So like we investigated uh, um, his relationship with his father that, I mean, nobody knows about it, but it was one of Italy's most, I mean, finest, uh, silent movie directors, you know, and 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 and, and, and many things like that. Uh, one of the things that made the the the, the film unique to me, <laughs> uh, that I had the privilege to 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 make it, was the the warmth and the participate the, the the true you know participation of some of the most iconic you know uh, international filmmakers that were so. So happy to pay their, you know, homage to Sergio Leone. Um, and we yeah, will definitely come on to that in a minute. But maybe just to take a step back, um, what was the genesis of the project? And it must have felt kind of ambitious, you know, to try and capture this on a film. So um, why did you want to take that on? Um, and, and were you intimidated by that at all? <laughs> the the the. Um... The project um, uh, came about when when Raffaella Leone uh, saw my my film on uh, uh, Friedkin and Cut on William Friedkin. She was uh, impressed by you know the the film and and she 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 asked me if I had any you know take on a potential film on her father. Uh, I think uh, as I said, it's been a privilege for me. So like and I, I always take my I mean this. Kind of tasks, you know, as a as a as a as a pure pleasure, you know, the idea of spending so much time with Sergio Leone's films and and possibly having the the, the yeah, as you said, the ambition, but the 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 the, the chance to sit down uh, as we're doing here with the with the Clint Eastwood, with the Steven Spielberg, Jennifer Connelly, De Niro, and, and all the others, you know. So it, it was. It was really, um, I wasn't intimidated because I, I, I think Leone deserved uh, something like that. And uh, the people I met um, confirmed my idea, you know, that he, they, they really, really wanted to, to be there. Steven Spielberg um, asked me until July to wait because he was finishing his film, but he had to be there for Sergio Leone. And yeah, coming to this, you know, kind of, incredible lineup of, of, you know, real other masters of cinema. Um, how did you approach them all? Um, how did you put them together? And what was it like being out, you know, having to, a sit down with each of these uh, people to discuss this incredible director? I was, I was impressed, but it, it happens always with the, with the greats, I would say, <laughs> in any, in any field. Uh, uh, the um, looking at how humble they were, uh, the simple idea of um, you know having the chance to you know uh, to explain why Leone was uh, was so important to them. And then of course uh, each one of them was different. Uh, Clint uh, is a man. Clint Eastwood is a man who you know uh, openly says that he owes his entire career to Sergio Leone. Uh, Quentin Tarantino feels like someone who was part of his crew. Uh, I mean, he's so um, aware of everything that happened on set, and he, of course, he's, he, he's a, he, you know, um, section each fragment of his films, and he knows everything. Scorsese, I think, is the best film historian that you could possibly <laughs> meet uh, for an interview. Steven Spielberg has this sort of like child. Uh, uh, gaze <laughs> in his eyes where he's so enthusiastic uh, uh, when he's talking about one of his heroes and he's one of our heroes, you know, as well. And uh, Jennifer Connelly basically said that she was, you know, he's the reason why she became an actress, you know. 
And uh, so it was really, each one of them was really, Robert De Niro, <laughs> uh, was really, really uh, happy and um, they were lovely all the way, yeah. And in terms of kind of looking at this question of what uh, his legacy is, um, what did you kind of discover that was almost new to you and, you know, I guess kind of representing this balance that was, you know, his passion for cinema, but also family um, and how that kind of fed into his work? I think that really, I mean, he belongs to that generation. He's from 1929. Uh, I mean, they experienced a lot. He was a child in Rome during the occupation, during the war, and uh, he uh, basically became a, a film person during the what we call it Hollywood on the Tiber, where, when in the in the fifties, like uh, there were so many um, big American productions in Rome, like Cleopatra, uh, Ben Hur. I mean, he's he's they they say that he was one of he he was the 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 chariot race director because he was a second unit director. So. Um, he, his entire life experience became his films. Once Upon a Time in America is a movie that has a lot to do with his childhood. And that's why he decided to wait 13 years. He stopped his career for 13 years. He, he turned down so many films, including The Godfather, to make the movie, as Sir Christopher Frayling says in the film, that he really, really, really wanted to make. And that is, that, that's so impressive and that's such a lesson for everyone, I think. And in terms of kind of perhaps looking at um, how his films sort of challenged, you know, the status quo or, you know, kind of upturned expectations of what would be in Hollywood at that time, you know, and the complexity and the intricacy and nuance, um, do you think that was also something that really meant he made more of a mark than, than other directors? I think that he he was a very, very sensitive, very um, intelligent kind of artist. And he realized that, um, as also Tarantino says in the film, that Hollywood cinema, a certain uh, uh, Hollywood cinema had come to an end. So uh, the only way, he, he loved American movies since he was a kid. So the only way to, uh, to, to start out a new, a new, you know, moment uh, for cinema was to was to break the rules, to make something new, to work on the language, to work on uh, on the on the characters, to twist, you know, uh, the icons, the image, you know, like uh, it's uh, it's famous the way he changed Harry Fonda, <laughs> he, he he made him, you know, a villain while he's been his entire career the 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 gentle american uh, uh, hero of the next door you know so he changed cinema in many in many respects and i think he added so many elements to the film grammar that everybody still today uses for i mean for for their films yeah and on the flip side you know was it also kind of a romanticized, almost fantastical image of America that, you know, sparked his imagination and, and that fed into his films? Yeah, I mean, uh, Steven Spielberg said something beautiful uh, uh, in the film. He says that he, he was a boy. He was a generous, you know, uh, entertainer that loved to entertain his friends without being pretentious. So if, you're, if, you, if you approach your, you know, your craft as, a, as a, an enthusiastic and generous boy, you know, you're probably someone who loves cinema already, who loves like uh, uh, graphic novels and something like that. So uh, who's able to, to, to mesh up all these elements, create something new and, uh, and, and make uh, something unique. That is the secret I mean, uh, of his cinema, I, I believe. So you had the support of, of his family, you had all these other incredible directors and actors come and participate. Did you face any challenges? Were there any moments that were really difficult in the making of this film? Actually, we started like four years ago, the, the film. Uh, it was right before the pandemic. So that was a big challenge. But since we started like four years ago, I had the chance to, 
right before everything, you know, shut down, to meet uh, Ennio Morricone. And I believe that was his last interview, last taped interview. And it was really mind-blowing. I mean, Morricone, eh, as Tarantino says in the film, was the co-writer of uh, Sergio Leone film in a way, no? That was that was tough because we we all wanted, I mean, the family was, you know, backing me the entire time. They were amazing. But, you know, uh, we had a long break and we started back in uh, October 21. Uh, but then, you know, we, I mean, it, it, the main problem, the main issue was the schedule of each one of, you know, the contributors of the film, because you can imagine, you know, they, they were, they are probably some of the busiest, you know, uh, filmmakers, actors in Hollywood, but they were like, mm, so sweet. Yeah. And for you, maybe on a personal level, were any of the people you interviewed, you're kind of like absolute heroes? I mean, maybe they all are in different ways, but did you have a real kind of pinch me moment of, of it making? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, many times. I have to say, <laughs> um, I mean, it's difficult to pick one, but, but uh, if I had to pick one, uh, was uh, when I met Robert De Niro, uh, because he, uh, when I was talking to him, I, I realized that the way he smiles, I mean, his, his facial expressions, expressions are the same that we are, we're used to in his films. And it's even more impressive if we think that he was such a, you know, uh, he's always been a transformist, you know, in his films. But you, you, you understand that, that he's always been himself, playing some, someone else. And uh, that was very moving. And ultimately, what do you hope people take away from watching your film? I mean, I guess some people will be very familiar w with him as a director, some people less so, um, they might learn something new. But I guess in a way, it's also kind of, um, you know, a tribute, a homage, you know, that kind of time capsule and that, that will always be there. And it's on record, you know, what his legacy is. I think that, I mean, my, I, I was, I, I've always been careful uh, to not make a film for, for only film people, for cinephiles, you know, because I, I believe that, I mean, his personal story, his, you know, drive, his determination, his passion for, for what he did. It could be art, it could be cooking, whatever, you know, but in this case was art, was cinema, is, is something very, very, very inspiring, you know, and he touched the lives of so many people uh, that, happen to be some of the artists that we respect the most nowadays. So I think, uh, and plus like his films that we had the chance to put in the film uh, in the documentary are so much fun, are so much, you know, entertaining. So I think that there's a combination of things, you know, what you get from him, uh, the, the entertainment from his films and uh, the words of the people in the film that I think will be part of the fun. And um, what does it mean to you to have your film here in Venice? And it sort of feels like the perfect place for it, right? Because this is a festival of, of cinephiles. Um, but you know, how, how does it feel to be here? I, I'm, I'm, I'm super happy and I'm super happy that uh, Sergio Leone is being celebrated here. Also because for one of those uh, bizarre like uh, turn of events, Sergio Leone was never celebrated here in his life. I mean, he's, he was never in competition here. He never won an award in, in Venice. That it's really interesting, you know, <laughs> to think about to me. Uh, so I think that, uh, I mean, uh, uh, just like um, Once Upon a Time in America was f eventually uh, uh, fully appreciated, unfortunately, after he passed, mm -hmm. I think this movie here is a way for him to be, you know, celebrated and, uh, you know, yeah, homage the, I mean, uh, the way he, he deserved. What do you think he would make of the current cinema landscape? It's not mine, it's a, it's a consideration that um, Spielberg did that I couldn't put in the film. He said he would be very fascinated by the, the series world because uh, his films were were always long no and uh, he took time uh, and so like he probably would be um you know intrigued by the idea of making you know a series about you know maybe his, his lost project you know the, the the siege of leningrad or maybe a new western yeah i think he would be uh, he would be interested by the the, the different you know ways of uh, you know 
exploring, you know, the, the language. Not sure about, you know, uh, the, 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 the contemporary directors, but I, 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 I know he was a big Scorsese fan. He was a big Spielberg. I think he would, he would love Tarantino, definitely. <laughs> Um, and finally, can you tell us what you might be working on next? Have you got a project in mind or? <laughs> I have different projects. Uh, I'm also, you know, um, uh, uh, writing uh, my first um, uh, fiction film, mm -hmm. you know, that, uh, that is uh, something that I wanted to do for for a long time. But uh, I mean, documentary is my is my home. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, I mean, uh, it will always be. Uh, the thing is, um, I have, every time you need to fall in love with a with a certain story or a character, you know. So like, uh, I have a, a few things, but now for me, uh, I, I try to to be in the present, mm -hmm. and I, I want to support the film because Sergio Leone is 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 probably the reason why I I am here. Mm -hmm. I, I do this job, mm -hmm. and uh, I mean, uh, I I want to focus on on the on the journey of the film for the mm -hmm. moment. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for sharing all that with us and really enjoy the rest of your time here in Venice. Thank, <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. You too.